factors. Courageous conversations about drug use can save lives. Visit FraserHealth.ca forward slash SAHI for more information or call the South Asian Health Institute at 236 332 This is Mandeep with Bula Kavadish. <laughs> In a world of technology, the future is online. Tune in to www.radiobulamussie.com. Radiobulamussie.com. <laughs> Thank you for joining Arif and Pepper's Thursdays uh, here with uh, our special guest today. Super excited, uh, <coughs> Ashneel Prakash. And Ashneel Prakash is from No Ties Podcast, but it's not just No Ties Podcast. It is, is it 1862, 1962, just throwing out 1762? Dates. Just throwing out dates. Just throwing out dates. Just throwing out dates. Yeah, that's right. So why don't we let Ash Neal tell us what it is? Yes, absolutely. I am from a podcast called No Ties 1879. Yes. 1879. 1879, yes. And uh, if you can break down the significance of the title. So No Ties uh, kind of refers to how we are not really tied to any one place. Mm -hmm. uh, we are South Indian, Fijian, and Canadian. Mm -hmm. So we're not really from any of these nations. I mean, I, sl I, I like to tell people I sleep in Canada. <laughs> I was born in Fiji and my blood came from uh, South India. Right? Uh, so, yeah. I mean, when people ask what I'm, where I'm from, that's what I tell them normally, uh -huh. right? And the 1879 part came from uh, the year in which the first boats arrived. Nice. From South India. So, uh -huh. so this is news to me. So you were born in Fiji. I was born in Fiji, yeah. But that I was a little bit news for me, too. Yeah. The first six months of my life, and then my parents moved here. So you were, you were a baby when you yeah. arrived. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So where, where in Fiji were you born? Suva. Ah, it's a Suva boy. Ah, Suva my baby. From ah. Suva and my mom's from Rikiriki. Oh, nice. Oh, see? We got a little bit of Rikiriki. <laughs> I have Rikiriki ties too. My mom's from Rikiriki. Nice. Yeah. All I know is my mom's from Suva and my dad's from Ba. Yeah. And uh, all I heard growing up was that Ba was like the village. Yeah. <laughs> and Suva was like the city where that was kind of modernized and they had mm -hmm. like running water and electricity and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, what's up? Switch, switch. <laughs> so yeah, so I, I've heard a lot of different things about um, mm -hmm. Fiji growing up, as far as what uh, what was considered the modern side and not the modern side, and um, it feels a little weird talking to people about it now because it's such a different place mm -hmm. from the things that I heard growing up. Now it's like a tourist resort, mm -hmm. and we got Fiji water, and we got all these different mm -hmm. things. Um, and I always wondered how does Fiji have Fiji water? Well, it does have the plant there, but I think they've actually sold the rights to someone in L.A. now. So I think it's now no longer really authentic Fiji water. So now it's just like a processing plant that, that has... Yeah, Fiji water. <laughs> you can go there and check it out. You can take pictures in front of the plant. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they actually process any Fiji water there. Um, I really don't have the answer to that. But they're an island. How, how do you get water on an island? Good question. Surrounded by ocean. Yeah. Aquifers. Well. Probably. Fiji got aquifers? I would assume yeah. so. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would assume that's where the water comes from. Yeah. Fresh water. Honestly. Yeah, fresh water. Because oh, yeah, there's... It would have to come from aquifers. <laughs> yeah. Because there's a lot of great minerals in yeah. Fiji water, and that's why people love to drink the Fiji it's water. Got yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I got to look into this a little bit more. I, I, so yeah. yeah. I, mean, I don't I don't know what the difference is between the water here. <laughs> we have the cleanest, best water here in Vancouver, <laughs> you know. We have the right minerals <laughs> yeah. that make you so beautiful. Just throw a scoop <laughs> of uh, Himalayan salt in every glass of water, you'll be fine. <laughs> you'll get all the <laughs> nutrients you need. Oh, what do you think? <laughs> well, so I actually I should like the identity way, the way that you uh, introduce yourself as far as your identity or lack yes. of yeah. identity goes. Mm -hmm. um, if you, you know, 
we say we're Canadian. Yeah. We we kind of regurgitate the national anthem that we've been taught. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it doesn't really hold any value or any meaning for us. Mm -hmm. What? Where do you find your identity? If you had to pick, where do you find your identity? If out of the three things, yeah. I honestly take a little bit from each thing. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if I had to say I'm one of those things, mm -hmm. I mean, I grew up in Ladner. I like, you know horses and farms <laughs> and I like fishing and yeah. boats and I like you know that's sort of thing. Yeah, yeah yeah you know <laughs> like I like I, I wear Carhartt pants and yeah. a Carhartt sweater in the winter and steel Damn. toe boots and you know like that's I mean if I had to say and I like maple syrup and <laughs> you know you know like uh, if I had to say I'm any one of those things I would say like you know I'm through and through like a Canadian Damn. dude, you know, like mm. I, I like all the typical Canadian things because Rocks. I grew up here, right? Yeah. And yeah. you know, I'm a little bit partial to Tim Hortons. Not sure how <laughs> Canadian that is, and you know, I'm not such a diehard hockey fan, right? I'm a little bit blasphemous in that way, as far as being a Canadian <laughs> go boy goes. But uh, yeah, do you do you like lacrosse? Yeah, I mean, it's huge in Ladner. Yeah. Uh, South Delta lacrosse is either you, you either work on a farm or you play lacrosse yeah. or hockey, right? So yeah, that's, been that's to that being in Ladner. Many times. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we've had some conversations in the past, um, and I, I know your, your take on some of this stuff as far as feeling like you belong in a community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and for the most part, all of the likes that you described for the most part in a brown community would make you an outlier yeah because it definitely you know, would. I, I grew up in east van surrounded by brown folk and and talking about fishing and and yeah and stuff, <laughs> and also, like what yeah, yeah. you go up and get them you know? yeah no and doubt you know it's funny that you say that because you know like um so tat mm -hmm. everybody knows tat yeah um so tat is actually known as the you know, uh, redneck Hindu. <laughs> the <laughs> redneck Hindu. Uh, so, you know what? Like, he is, he's a hunter. He's a, you know, he does all the outdoor activities. Your husband. You know, yeah. Okay, and cool. See, there you go. Yeah, he's he's like a man after outdoor, my own heart. Like, outdoor rough guy. And but you if know, you hear him talk and you didn't see him, Yes. I would think he's a white guy. So I didn't know any of this until you just told me, and I've yeah. met Tad a yeah. few times now, so yeah. I wouldn't have known that. To me, he just looks like another typical brown, brown guy. guy. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. See now, that's yeah. cool. Now that's cool. Interest. Now, yeah. <laughs> interest, yeah. See, the thing is, I enjoy mm -hmm. sitting on a boat. Yeah. <laughs> I like cabins. <laughs> I like cabins. Yeah. I like rivers and fire and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, you actually fish. Yeah, I actually. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, started <laughs> fishing last year. Um, and uh, I was unsuccessful uh, catching crab though like I can do that just fine we, we catch crab every year we go out uh, sailing right mm -hmm. and love to catch crab um, yeah but uh, yeah I suck at fishing <laughs> I, d I would I would like to say that I'm a not very good at fishing but this year I promise I'm going to catch a fish kill it eat it cook it somehow one way or another yeah <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I will do it <laughs> so talking about all of this stuff like mm -hmm. all the things that you've picked up on right and and you've adapted to the Canadian way mm -hmm. now when you first came tell us a little bit about that story like obviously you're not going to be really remember the first little bit but let's say you started going to school yeah like how, how hard was it for you to fit in like tell us a little bit about your journey it was pretty difficult I would say to fit in because I didn't really know how to fit in mm -hmm. really uh, I was kind of a weird kid growing up mm -hmm. um, everybody says that I was like cute and happy and da 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 but I I mean looking back on it now I always remember always feeling this baseline anxiety all the time mm -hmm. And always being like knowing that I was different, right? Mm -hmm. Like, Ladner has changed a lot mm -hmm. now from before, right? And it's a great place to live. I love it. Wouldn't live anywhere else, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, but back then, like, 
seeing a brown, like, I was the only one, right? Mm -hmm. And there was maybe one or two East Indian families, right? And, like, definitely no black people, mm -hmm. and, like, maybe one or two Chinese people. But, like, yeah. you know, like, there was nobody there for me. Like, I couldn't see myself in anybody, nice. right? So mm -hmm. it was very difficult, like, like, it was very difficult to fit in mm -hmm. because I knew I was different and I did different things at home, right? Mm -hmm. I did puja and stuff like that at home, right? Mm -hmm. And like, you know, I didn't eat meat, cow, and I didn't eat meat on Monday. You know, I did different things, and I did different things at home, and I knew that, and like, you know, going to school and stuff, it was a little bit harder to fit mm -hmm. in because all these other kids didn't do all those right. things at home, right? So, uh, yeah, it was uh, difficult to fit in because it was like, on one hand, like, you were this way, mm -hmm. and then on the other hand, you had to be a different way to fit in with everybody and so and some did you really have to be different like did any of your friends understand or know like did you try to explain at any point like you know this is my culture this is what we do did yeah in front of you? yeah I mean some people knew some people were okay with you know they were just like you mm -hmm. you are you who you are uh, a lot of people just see like a lot of people like to do the check mark box thing, right? Mm -hmm. So whenever you tell them that you're a South Indian Fijian, they don't get it. So they just group you into your East Indian, you're a Punjabi guy, you're a mm -hmm. Sikh. You know, they don't understand that whole whatever their reference. Point yeah, is. they don't get it. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, it was almost just like, you know what, whatever. I'll just do whatever you tell me. I'll just be whatever you want me to be because clearly, me explaining it to you mm -hmm. isn't getting through to you, right? Mm -hmm. So. They almost, I in a way, it was like, you know, <laughs> their fear of something different made me change into just whatever was in front of me. So that's that's important that what you just said, like that's, that's that hits hard, mm -hmm. like the fear of of you being different, mm -hmm. right? And and we often we come across this, right? Like the yeah. fear of being different. We don't embrace it. We judge it. Yeah, right? totally. And and it really it really takes a toll. Yeah, on were, an were you able to find pride in your identity and bring that with you into environments, or do you feel like you had to kind of leave it at home and be the person that people mm. were used to seeing? Mm. So, like I told you guys about, like how I, I like I take something from. Yeah, yeah I guess like you know I kind of mm. took a little bit from everything, right? Like. Mm -hmm. I didn't front like I was like, you know, one thing or another, right? right? I, I did, you know, at 15 years old, I had an ohm tattooed on my, my forearm, right? Or, you know, so everybody, That's I, mean, I mean, it was on display for everybody to see. Mm -hmm. My ohm on my necklace was on display for everybody to see. So like, yeah, it was what everybody wanted me to be and what I thought everybody wanted me to be. Right. But then also I was like, you know, a brown guy who you know is wearing the symbols and like you know mm -hmm. uh, still kind of projecting that image of being mm -hmm. you know a brown guy well yeah. so yeah. so the ohm and the necklace and all of those things I mean what does that mean to you now honestly now it just like for me it kind of like is a I don't know I guess it kind of means what it is like it's a very basic thing for me. It's like, it's just a symbol of like the Hindu belief system for me, it, which like also like I've never been a big puja person. The only reason why I got a tattoo of an ohm on my arm was because I was 15 and I wanted a tattoo and this was a surefire way to get my parents to say yes, <laughs> right? So I didn't really care about Hinduism or anything like that. Yeah. And like now I'm starting to kind of like, I guess, the meaning of the symbol for me is probably going to change as time goes on. Yeah. Uh, for me right now, it kind of is just like, <laughs> you know, it does not mean yoga. A cool piece. <laughs> yeah, and you know, like, and also like, you know, before, I, I guess I didn't really know what it meant, but mm -hmm. you know, my mom kind of, exp you know, said, you know, yeah. this is the symbol of Hanumanji, etc., and like, mm -hmm. this is what it means, and. Which is powerful. Yeah. It is very powerful. So, so like, I don't know if my understanding of it is mm -hmm. the understanding of it, for, but for me, it's just like, 
it means Hinduism and it has an association to Hanumanji yeah. and the whole story of him in the mountain and the plant, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, that represents Yeah, strength. yeah, yeah. And so, uh, resilience. Yeah. And I, I was just going to say, like changing, yeah. constantly changing, and right? I I kind of feel like you are. You are that. You are that symbol, right? Because your journey. So you're recovering. Yeah, recovering, addict, alcoholic, yes. clean, drug addict. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So tell us a little bit about that journey. That was. It's a very difficult one. That's for sure. Yeah. And it's been. I mean, since I uh, admitted to myself mm -hmm. that I had a problem, or when I f realized that there was a problem, or <laughs> when other people started seeing it too i guess when when did you realize i uh so from then until now it's been about um i would say 12 years that's wow. amazing 12 years of an up and down roller coaster journey of mm -hmm. being clean being good going to jail getting arrested committing crimes like being a complete degenerate and like you know bouncing up and down like you know having those stints of like doing good and then hitting rock bottom and then mm -hmm. or not even rock bottom just below at that Ball time right or, you know mm -hmm. I didn't really hit rock bottom until about th three and a half years ago that's when it really happened right so Damn. I mean all told it's like been 12 years mm -hmm. but the last uh, two and a half years I've been I mean I'll be honest I still smoke pot mm -hmm. and I don't really it is what it is. I'm not going to stop doing that. It's awesome. Sure. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't drink alcohol, yeah. and I do not mm -hmm. participate in any other drug doing, and I have been off my DOC for my drug of choice for two and a half years now. It's so. a beautiful thing, man. It's a it beautiful is. thing. Yeah. And it's like, it's, it's in our community especially, we have so much stigma around any kind of substance abuse, addiction, mm -hmm. uh, any anything oh, that... Yeah is a problem as a result of trauma because mm -hmm. we're essentially first of all as men we're told to just suck it up yeah mm -hmm. deal with your issues mm -hmm. suck it up uh and then as brown men on top of that we have this weird kind of like machismo that we have to live up to mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. a strong brown man which is in all reality absolutely meaningless because strength in our communities especially on the male side of things is hella toxic yeah strength for for brown men is like control your women control yes. your kids mm -hmm. You know, live like you know a violent, angry maniac that has its life under control, mm -hmm. but doesn't have himself under control. Live look like live like the sugar cane overseer. Yeah, I mean on our side of things, that's mm -hmm. what it seems like. Right? Yeah, so like, I mean, like, so you you went through this experience as a late teen. Were you like late teens, early twenties in this space when you first started to have this kind of? When I first started, like when uh, this jump, when this kind of came into your life, mm -hmm. like when I first started getting loaded, yeah. or when I first started, yeah, when you yeah. first started to experience the, the the addiction in your drug of choice. Was well, for a while there, it was real fun. I mean, like it is mm -hmm. in the beginning for all everybody who does these things. Like sure, it's yeah. fun, it's great, it's a party, and then it crosses a line. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. I mean, the line for me that I crossed where it was like the line in the sand, mm -hmm. the definite mm -hmm. black and going from black to white, going from dark to gray or whatever you want to mm -hmm. call it. Like it was when I tried to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I got really drunk and this is after I, I was still dealing with a charge from before. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got really drunk and I, I just was not doing good at the time, doing well at the time. Mm -hmm. Took a bunch of sleeping pills and uh, I was, um, my friend took me to the hospital. She was a nurse. She is a nurse. She took me to the hospital and uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, yeah, I woke up. I didn't really remember much, but I woke up the next day and in the hospital, right, they let me go. But Dude, that was the day where everything changed and I was like, oh my goodness, like, we are so far gone from partying and having a fun time. This mm -hmm. is a problem. Yeah, yeah, and this is such an important conversation because it parents is. don't know how to approach their kids mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and speak to them in a way that's going to be constructive and not condemning them. And um, again, especially in our communities, like we don't mm -hmm. talk about any of these things. Mm -hmm. When parents have kids going through this, they hide it, hide it, cover it up, cover yeah. it up. Yeah. Don't let anybody Absolutely. know. Make sure no one hears about it. It, 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 now that you have some clarity and some hindsight mm -hmm. and you look back at that period of time is there anything 
anybody could have said to you, from like as far as your parents go, is there anything your mm-hmm. parents could have done or said or proactively worked on? First of all, they obviously knew you were experiencing something or going through something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But in now they're un- obviously the limited understanding of how to deal with addiction. Is there anything that they could have done to stem it earlier? Or do you think you had to go through all of those things to get to where you are? Oh, uh, definitely. Like, so, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? Like, I mean, I can, I know all the things now. Because you know, you're, you're talking to parents and kids yeah, right now. Yeah. So for parents hearing this that know their kids are going through something, yeah. mm-hmm. is there a point where they could have stepped in and done something different? Yeah, there was. But the thing is, they didn't know that, right? So, like, I mean, here's the thing, like, it, it's like a crazy thing like it was always going to happen no matter how you slice it I was always going to be this way and like I said hindsight is twenty twenty, and I know all the things I know about generational trauma I know about systemic trauma I know about yeah. PTS I know about all the things now right yeah, yeah. so now I can look back and say well mom and dad could have done these things and these things and these things mm-hmm. but would I be here right now no not at all and honestly like I, for a long time, was just like, man, this is stupid. Like, I didn't, this is happening for no reason. And I'm talking about after my last charge, I would always say, like, if this and that and the other thing didn't go wrong, I would have been fine right now. But would I be here doing these things, talking to these people, having these conversations? Like, I wouldn't at all. So in the, you know, (laughs) it's a weird thing, like, yeah, there was a lot they could have done different, a lot, but I'm, went through it and I'm glad I did but like I mean the biggest one thing any parent can do for their kid if they're it's just to be there and learn about addiction and alcoholism as much as you can you know attend an Al-Anon meeting and these things do happen in Hindi and in Punjabi right so there's no real excuse there are meetings for these types of things for people who are the family members of an alcoholic or an addict Mm -hmm. like compassion and empathy Mm -hmm. and vulnerability are like key in these things right Mm -hmm. like you have to like you just have to be supportive but you also have to make sure you take care of yourself right because yes. i'm going to tell you this right now like one addict affects 100 people so wow. you know like wow. you you have to make sure you i mean that's a lot of damage to go around mm-hmm. from one person so think about how much damage the people closest to that person are taking right mm-hmm. they're taking a lot right so if you are a family member of an alcoholic or an addict, like, please, like, be there for that person, but uh, talk to other people who are in the same shoes as you, who have experience in this matter, who can help you take care of yourself, because, you, I mean, you're useless to everybody unless you can take care of yourself, mm-hmm. and, like, dealing with an alcoholic or an addict, it's brutal, like, it, it, it's not easy and I know like it's not easy to deal with us mm-hmm. and I'm the son of an alcoholic mm-hmm. so it's not like I, I get it mm-hmm. right it's not easy to deal with us and I get it but first like you have to just make sure you take care of yourself mm-hmm. so the, the, for the, the, other the, the lectures too. the condemning it's not helping fighting the anger mm-hmm. all of those things that we default to yeah. as what we think is good parenting mm-hmm. All that stuff just pushes whoever you're trying to help deeper into their addiction. Oh, 100%. It makes it a lot worse, for sure. And it was just going to drive a wedge in between, you know, you and the other person, right? Like, this is a family disease. Mm-hmm. Right. And you can't... I think can't that's be important for people. Yeah, yeah it's it a family crazy. disease, yeah. and you're not going to fix this just on your own. Yeah, yeah that's you know? so important. Yeah. And, and you know, there's some other things that you had, um, we had talked about um, previous to co- uh, you coming on, mm-hmm. which I really appreciate. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, no problem. For giving me the time. Um, you know, I really understood a lot more once I spoke to you. And some of the key things were like, that stood out to me was like, you know, you thought that drinking and driving was okay. Uh, normal, yeah. yeah normal. Lots you know, of normalcy yeah, is going Yeah, a lot of, lot of normalcy. So, you know, like, I want you to tell the audience. I want you to tell us, like, like, because that really, like, you know what? Like, often we think that it is okay. 
right? We think that's, that's hey, you know what? We're just drinking and driving. It's okay. Well, honestly, as a DD for everybody, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I, I know how easy it is for someone to be like, I'm good, I'm yeah. good, I'm yeah. good, I'm good. I'll yeah. just, I, yeah. I only live 10 minutes away, I only have five yeah. minutes away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and I can be a real, you know, buzzkill for people because mm-hmm. I'm like, no, just stop. I'm sober completely, just give me your keys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I feel like there's like a, like people feel like they're almost surrendering power mm-hmm. as opposed to mm-hmm. being safe. Yeah, I don't understand that one bit. I personally didn't drink and drive really Mm-hmm. I mean, I might have done the, like, see, I li- love driving, so mm-hmm. there was no way I would ever... Because you're a real gearhead. Yeah, like, there's... A, yeah, that's the other thing to add on to the Canadian boy <laughs> thing. Like, I love <laughs> motorsports. Um, yeah, like, I like... So there's no way I would ever risk, like, losing my car, right? <laughs> and, like, the only times I have is because I was driving too fast. So anyways, um, there's no way I... And the only times I ever did it was because it was like, oh, I just had this beer, I'm at this brewery, I need to drive my car home. Mm so I can drink more and do drugs. Like, that was my thought process. Like, wow. take your car home so you can get loaded more, right? So, so I never... a responsibility. Yeah, dude, I... Lo- okay, so here's the thing. Wow. There, I'm not trying to glorify this, but there are... When I went to rehab, everybody would be like, oh, so you drank and did drugs like a gentleman then? Because I would always be like, well, I never, like, I never did... Like, I would always try and blah, blah. Oh, so you're better than... Lo- and you know what? It is such an... E- yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, so you're still a dirt bag whether you're doing it or not. Okay. So, what yeah. made you stop at that point? Like, what? Like, obviously, you had, like, or we've said, you had responsibility. Yeah. And you, you knew it. Yeah. So, what? Like, what went through your head? Like, it was just because you didn't want to lose your. Well, to drive. I mean, like, I, I work far away. Like, I, like, yeah. Whenever I got loaded, it was like. I was a binge drinker, mm-hmm. right? I didn't really do it during the week. Mm-hmm. I did it sometimes during the week, but not really. Mm-hmm. So when I did it on the weekend, it was like planned out, you know, stay up three days, whatever, <laughs> do the drugs, drink the alcohol, right? And, you know, I would always make sure, you know, I wouldn't put myself in a position where I had to leave the house or go somewhere or talk to people or whatever. It's us alcoholics will manipulate the situation in a way where we come out on top and you know it's just a weird gre- it's just a weird greasy way we run our minds yeah. yeah but i mean like the drinking and driving thing like i guess the reason why i didn't do it mm-hmm. and i mean it's not to mention it's like impossible to do now right <laughs> like if you get pulled over you're screwed yeah. but like you know back in the day like <laughs> when i was a kid so, like, when I was a kid, like, me and my uncle and my, it was my dad and my uncle in the truck, and they would always have a six-pack or a bottle, and, like, so seeing that all the time, I would be like, oh, well, it's normal to always just have, like, a, a 26 or a six-pack in the car, mm-hmm. you know? Like, I was exposed to these types of things pretty early, and it was kind of weird because now it's just, like, I didn't really have a chance, <laughs> you know, yeah, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, especially when it's the, w- the essentially the same sex parent that you model your behavior after, mm-hmm. and I, I think you, it's supposed to be someone that you look up to, mm-hmm. and you admire, and that's someone that pushes you in a direction that makes you want to be better, mm-hmm. and if you're just seeing these constant reoccurring toxic behaviors, you're like, oh, it's all good, my dad's, my dad's cool, yeah, and you kind of relate to it in a way where it's like, Nothing tragic ever happened with your dad driving? No. No, 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 never. But there were some pretty terrifying moments, to tell you that, right now. Pretty terrifying moments. Yeah. And thankfully, thankfully, thankfully. nothing devastating (laughs) happened in those situations. My dad's a good guy now, okay, everybody? (laughs) Don't get it twisted. (laughs) We're talking about it a different time. This is really important for us to explain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Parents do go through a change. Right? Yeah, they it's do. Not, it's not easy for parents either. Mm-hmm. So we're not, you know what, yeah. Like, you know, I'm glad you said that because you yeah. know what, they still support you. They love yeah. you. And they're, you know what, and they've come a long ways, which is amazing to yeah, hear. Totally. Yeah, totally. Well, because, I mean, they didn't, they didn't have role models themselves yeah. no. to model their parenting behavior after. Mm-hmm. No, and no. I mean, for me, I have two grown kids. Mm-hmm. And my modeling, my parent style 
I mean, obviously my mom was angelic as a parent, but like as far as my dad goes, he was a tyrant in the house. <laughs> so my parenting style is to be the complete opposite right. of everything that he ever did. Right. I, I was able to rationalize as a teenager, like, yo, I never want to be that way to my kids. Mm -hmm. Whatever that is, I want my kids to experience something completely different. And now as, you know, my, I have a 20 year old and a 15 year old very soon. Mm -hmm. And um, the feedback that I get from them, because I make sure, you know, as parents, we check in with them. Mm -hmm. How are we doing as parents? You know, you guys are great kids. How are we doing as parents? Mm -hmm. And the feedback that I get from them makes me feel like, okay, we are we are doing it right mm -hmm. because they feel safe, they feel empowered, comfortable, confident. And kids from our generation, uh, maybe it might be different for you. You grew up in a different environment than communities, like the way communities are here. Mm -hmm. And um, very different. Yeah, and I find like different you know, you include <laughs> religion and trauma and all these things and kind of give everyone the same blueprint to say this is the only way to raise your kids right. Mm -hmm. Almost the entirety of my generation mm -hmm. feels like they have to be parents the way their parents were parents, mm -hmm. and they just gonna, they just keep adding to the cycle of trauma, and eventually those kids are just not gonna want to have kids. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, this world sucks. I'm always mad. I'm always upset. I don't mm -hmm. want like I don't want kids to feel that way because we're kind of I feel like we're in a, a generation of uh, a time now where people are able to be a lot more free as far as how they can represent themselves mm -hmm. individually and like you know growing up a similar situ situation you I had no idea what it was because I grew up around Punjabi kids and Hindu kids and Chinese and Vietnamese kids and everybody wanted to be a gangster <laughs> and I, I didn't want to be a gangster I wanted to be smart I wanted to accomplish things and I didn't want to be a gangster I'm like yeah. what am I where am I supposed to go here but I feel like we're in an era of individuals where people can finally feel like themselves and uh, the weird part is, it seems like nobody wants to have kids anymore. Yeah, it's really... How do you feel? Yeah. Do you want to have kids? Uh, I mean, I don't think it would be a, such a great idea for me to have kids. <laughs> I mean, for now, let's just figure out <laughs> my crazy brain and get that worked on. But, uh, you know, I, I, I would... See, I, I always, like, was like, nah, screw it. Like, at first I was like, yeah, I want kids. And then I was like, nah, screw it. And then I saw this video on TikTok. Okay, mm. of this little little kid, like, like tiny kid wearing, like, Carhartt coveralls. Aww. And he's sitting there with a board in front of him. And there's his name. And his dad gives him a hammer and a nail. And the kid takes the nail and the hammer and tacks the nail into the board and takes the hammer with both hands and starts banging the nail into the board and I'm watching this video going, oh my goodness, that's why you guys do this. That's why you guys have kids. I was like, oh my, and, and I'm tearing up right now because I was just like, that's it right there. So, you know, like, I guess I get it, right? Yeah. But right now for me, it's just like, no, nah, probably not a good idea. But you feel like you have something you could offer. Yeah. I do, I do feel that way. And and honestly, like the older my parents get too, and like, you know, my, my friends came by the other day, mm -hmm. uh, they have a little kid, and he's three years old, and he's um, like, <laughs> so hilarious, man, and, and, and like, and just seeing my parents with him, I was just like, oh, mm. you know, like, you know, it, it would, just seeing how they are with the kid, and I was just like, you know, that, that's really <laughs> sweet and nice, and like, I can see it in my mom's eyes sometimes, she's just like, oh, I wish, I mean, I, I can feel it sometimes too, you know, and it's just like, ah. But I got a long way to go before I get there. And when I get there, it might be too late. I might not want to have right. to deal with a kid at 40 years old or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's, so, I, that's I mean, it's all up to my sister. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's got to she she carry the family an name. Theater, she does not want kids either. <laughs> <No. laughs> so, so I think it's going to be... Uh, well, I mean, it might happen with me, maybe, maybe not. It's a toss-up. Yeah. But if it does happen... I will step up for sure because mm -hmm. I've had the opportunity in the past and like one time it was definitely not the right time and mm -hmm. we had to make a decision there and the second time it just but it was, it was it not was, good it the was second a possibility time. Yeah. at one time yeah it was a possibility and both times I, like both times I was just like hey you know what if like because it was her decision right so it was just like hey whatever you whatever happens like i'm obviously not gonna like i'm from a brown family dude Did you? yeah no we don't do that <laughs> don't like are you kidding my mom would 
Yeah. My mom would hang me from a tree, man, yeah. upside down. <laughs> Beat me with a pinata, like a pinata, man. So that wasn't going to happen either way, right? Yeah. But, like, you know, I mean, I, I, the way I like it now is, like, I had a chance in the past. I blew it. Mm -hmm. And now I have to earn the opportunity again by r fixing, mm -hmm. or sorry, breaking the cycle, yeah. Yeah. which is whatever, systemic trauma, generational trauma. Yeah. Now, you, you did tear up. I did a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's actually really amazing to see, <laughs> right? I mean, that's powerful. Like, you know, you're showing emotions, which is amazing. Yeah. You know, and but you're also taking responsibility, knowing that, you know what, right now is not the time. Mm -hmm. But there is there is something there that yeah. you want to give, right? So I think that's such a beautiful vibe, like, to have, like, to have, to be vulnerable like that. Yeah. It's amazing. Like, do you find yourself a little bit, um, like, do you have to live up to that macho with your mom and dad? Or no. Like, do they, are they loving, are they, like, you know, like, how, how do you, because you, you seem like you're a little bit, you're kind of a loving guy. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sensitive, I would yeah. say. Yeah. I would say, like, it's so weird, like. I'm like the b b two things on either extreme, like, you know, I'm very sensitive and like, I'm not even kidding, you know, I'll be like, I might tear up on the way home just because I'm listening to a song and I might be like, oh man, like I'm getting some feels. Wow. And I, te I tear up when I get highly inspired too, actually. Mm -hmm. So like, I feel like I'm like a very sensitive person, but then also like on the flip side, like I can go from zero to a hundred and be like really, really upset. Yeah and like be not such a loving guy mm -hmm. so and like the middle ground in between is mm -hmm. like so far in between sometimes you know i'm yeah. th that middle ground is getting better now the longer i stay clean and sober yeah. the more i can just be in that middle ground but mm -hmm. so it seems like your mental health is is a priority for you big time yeah. without me keeping that in check i'm just gonna go out and get loaded and drink and not you know all all it takes is for me to stub my toe one little time and the world's ending and everything sucks mm -hmm. and screw it i'm gonna go drink right so how do we, your mental health how do we make this a priority in our communities because i feel like in our mm -hmm. communities especially amongst the men mm -hmm. uh mental health is not a priority it's not talked about yeah it's not expressed enough to make men feel comfortable enough to talk to each other about yeah things. Because there's one thing, you know, if you have a girlfriend or whatever, you, you, you can talk to her somewhat. But to be able to, like, really express yourself and your mental health and your anxieties and your depressions, I think having the opportunity to speak to another man about it is way more powerful than you will get from anything. 100%. But we are so caught up in this idea that it's weakness. Mm -hmm. What would you suggest to men out there listening? Mm -hmm. How do you approach this conversation without diminishing whatever your machine okay <laughs> so I would I, I would just say that the two key things is to and and I went to a treatment center rehab center where it was all guys got guy treatment center and this is where I learned how to talk to mm. talk to other men and be compassionate and mm -hmm. empathetic and vulnerable so those are the two things if you're gonna be anything, if you like, if you're a dude right now and you're listening, if you're gonna be anything with another dude who's like having troubles, vulnerability and empathy, those are two th key things that are going to change the landscape Which are the for two hardest things. Yeah, like Especially and the vulnerable part. Yeah, and yeah, the vulnerable part. Yeah, for sure. But if say you're you're tr you want to be vulnerable with me, mm -hmm. if I just say, hey, man. If I just say I'm going to be empathetic by saying, hey, I'm just going to listen to you. I'm not going to try, like, you're trying to tell me you have a nail sticking out of your head. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to tell me about this nail sticking out of your head and it feels like a headache. I'm not going to try and say, yeah, you know, you probably wouldn't have that headache if you had that You know, I'm just going to let you say your things and I'm going to be like, yeah, that must be really hard. Hearing that hearing somebody say yeah that's very difficult or empathizing with you in that way is a whole lot better than talking to somebody who just wants to say their piece after you're done or try to fix whatever yeah you're and i meet a lot of people like that who think they're being empathetic and think they're being a good listener and think they're being helpful and they're actually just toxic toxic people who just like 
it's, it's just I don't go and talk to those people anymore actually so like you know like like I say don't go to a Home Depot when your car is broken <laughs> right mm-hmm. go to the mechanic right like and not to the Monday yeah and not to the Monday that's the other thing too yeah, is we that we do that this. a lot yes. yeah you yeah. said you brought that up yeah, yeah you know what this is really important for our listeners as well Big right time. like you know what just like how you reference don't take your car <laughs> to Home Depot, mm-hmm. it's the same thing. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being spiritual. There's nothing wrong with praying to God for, you know, for positive energy. There's nothing wrong with any of those things. We all have have to have an outlet, right? Yeah. I think positive energy, all of those things are amazing and wonderful. No one is questioning that. But if your kids have an issue, such as an addiction... Like, why are we taking them to the Monday? Thinking that that's going to fix the situation. Or if their sexuality is different and mm-hmm. they're going to the Monday because they think, oh, you know, um, I'm going to speak in Hindi, mm-hmm. right? Like, oh, Bhagwan, please, you know. <laughs> that wasn't Hindi, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> it was <laughs> English. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's the best type of Hindi, okay? <laughs> a little bit of both. English. English, English. English. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. A little English. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to stop now. <laughs> no, I mean, cause it, and, and, and it goes for all faiths, not just yes. Hindu, it, no, Hinduism. No, it's not just as well. Hinduism. In no. Islam, we do the same thing, yeah. you know? Um, we someone's do. We going through addiction, to oh, call the imam. Like, yeah. And yeah, I mean, how many exorcisms oh, could have just yeah. been, yeah. you know? Oh, man. I mean, I love believing in that stuff. There are some legit exorcisms, but come on, oh, man. Exactly. Like, yeah. how many times have ju- has it just been somebody with mental health issues and it's just been like, oh, they're in the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, Well, we've talked about so- one specific situation. Yeah. So you have psoriasis. Yeah. And so yeah. you had mentioned that your mom, yeah. like, had, like, given... Bless her mental, heart. Yeah, yeah bless yeah. her heart. Bless her heart. I love moms that are like this. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, yes, bless her heart. Because my... Actually, my mom would never. Um, she's hardcore. She's like the male, right? Like she's yeah, human <laughs> probably. But but I know my fuas would because my fuas are that that person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, beta lao, gel pilo. Like you know, mm-hmm. that's just gonna make you clear everything out of your system, right? That kind of stuff scares me because I don't know where that came from. It's bad. It's yeah. bad. Yeah. Yeah. So things like that. Like okay, so your mom, bless her heart. I yeah. mean, she really thought that this was going to help you, but it actually made your condition. I mean, it didn't really do anything at all. It didn't do anything. <laughs> it didn't do anything at all. Okay. But, I mean, like, you know, I only did it because... Well, I mean, like, I I'm also trying to get a little bit closer to my culture, so, I mean, I'm going to... Mm-hmm. I mean, if mom's taking me to Monday and yeah. showing me things, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it just yeah. because yeah. I'm gonna do it, right? But in, I know that this is a medical issue, and this Obviously. isn't going to, like, you know, putting whatever on my skin isn't gonna be the answer. Like, I know what I need, and that is a biological injection that I take once a month. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is the only thing that's taken it away, mm-hmm. not puja in Monday. But adding a little extra juice, I'm okay with that. But yeah. I mean, yeah, like you can't, like. You can't just be like, oh, okay, you're whatever, we're going to go to the temple now. Like, no, please go to the doctor. doctors. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, for at the very least, if you live in can't, I mean, not even, people have smartphones. Everybody has access to WebMD. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> you can at the very least Google that stuff. You don't have to just default to Puja Mandir okay. and whatever. If there is a God, <laughs> if there is, I don't know if people are going to hate me saying this, he gave people the ability to become doctors. Mm-hmm. If there is a God. Yeah. He gave people the knowledge, the wherewithal, the mm-hmm. skills to become doctors to fix people. Mm-hmm. He didn't just say, he, I keep saying he, it was horrible. Whatever it is, didn't say, come to the temple, the mosque, the church, wherever it is, and I'll heal you. That's not how it goes. Please, if you're listening, <laughs> take your kids to doctors <laughs> yes. before you take it to the mandir, the mosque, or the temple yes. to practice your faith. Absolutely. But, um, yeah. It's a bit of a sideways. I feel like we met you at a great time. Well, I feel like we personally met you at a great time because we've been able to do um, some really fun things, some mm-hmm. really exciting, creative things. We've been able to kind of um, put ourselves in situations where, for yourself at least, you have not had the opportunity to do before. 
we had a great experience with High Phrase Live yep. a couple weeks back. Yep. Got to see you on stage doing your thing. Mm -hmm. And it's now... Absolutely amazing. <laughs> yeah. By the way. <laughs> Honestly, you. the feedback yeah. has been fantastic. Yeah. Um, we got to see some of the video yesterday when we were edi editing and stuff and it's going to mm. look amazing. But, um, nice. Yeah, very excited to, to kind of see that. And now you are probably tackling one of the most difficult creative mm -hmm. things that you can possibly do with stand-up comedy. Yeah, I'm going to try it out, see what happens. That's amazing. It's a big I'm going to try it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I actually have a lot of faith in you. I, I think that you're going to kill it because just from watching you on that live high praise, high, 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 high phrase, yeah. oh my goodness, I can't Saint say Church. <laughs> My, my house church. is going to like... Mm, that's it. I'm mm, <laughs> out now. But anyway, it's um no. I like. I just. It was absolutely amazing yeah. to see you, the at your like, <laughs> just the delivery. <laughs> Thank Everything. you. You were just so funny, and it was just so like both you and your sister both killed it. But you did actually take the cake. Like you. <laughs> <laughs> like you were in your element. You were in I your was element. in yeah. my element. Yeah. I remember earlier that day for mm -hmm. sound check, you looked at me on the stage. You're like, you're so comfortable right yeah. now. I'm like, yeah, yeah. 100. percent I mean, you looked the part. You fit the part. You yeah. the part. It was just amazing, and you were so good on the fly. Like it just seemed like you know you kind of rehearsed it, but then there was parts where you didn't really go there. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, and I think that's that's not easy. Nah, not at all, man. Yeah. Like. I, I've been on stages for 20 plus years and I see people that have been on stage for years and years and years mm -hmm. and do not have that level of comfortability mm -hmm. um, just to get up and first of all do something that's considered to be provocative, mm -hmm. a little outlandish, <laughs> a little outrageous yeah. Yeah. Uh, and put the full believability of your conviction behind the words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where stand-up for you is going to be very, very natural. Totally. Yeah. yeah. I mean, my material, um, just what I've been writing, is it's all real stories, mm -hmm. and they're just conversations. Some of them are conversations I've had with people. Mm -hmm. Some of it is just, like, funny stuff that, like, comes into my mind about just, you know, day-to-day -day life and mm -hmm. pop culture things that... You know, people make fun of me for. I I even make fun of myself for it. Like I love the Fast and the Furious, like one through like five. The okay. rest kind of or whatever. But you know, like, and that. everybody makes fun of me for it. And I know they're super, but I love them. And like, you know, I got jokes about how I, I got jokes about Vancouver driving, Fast and the Furious, <laughs> and like, ra and I've thrown races, racial stuff into it. So like. Yeah. I, I'm trying to be as original as possible and yeah. also just like, you know, you raise a good point about if it's in your head, it's meant to be written down. Yeah. Yeah. And literally everything that's been coming into my head, I've been writing it down. Yeah. And I'm just like, man, this is funny. I'm sitting there laughing at my own jokes and <laughs> I can envision myself. Like, and I'm not trying to be arrogant or cocky no, here right now. And, uh, yeah, and I'm being serious right yeah. now. And I don't know what it is, but. I'm envisioning myself at this show where we were talking about mm -hmm. the other day, and I are like I'm not sweating it. I don't feel nervous about it. I don't f have a frog in my throat, you know, no butterflies. Like I'm envisioning myself on stage right now, and I'm like comfortable and I'm cool and I'm doing it just fine. Do, do you think I'll be able to move around too? Yeah, that's yeah. gonna be the better thing because for the high phrase thing, I was just like, man, I gotta sit Fine here at his desk and I want to like flail around and <laughs> move around like. I feel like I'm going to be more Mind comfortable yourself. and more in, 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 yeah. in my element because I'll be able to spread my arms out yes. a little bit and flail around and mm -hmm. jump about and <laughs> scream and yell a little bit more, you know? <laughs> I mean... So is this happening soon? To be... Well, I don't know. We've got to ask, ask the promoter man right here. Pretty soon. Well, see, to be decided. The next thing is, weekend? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get my feet wet, too, in comedy. I've done yeah. a couple sets so far. Mm -hmm. um, I'm one of these people that thinks that they can do everything. Mm. <laughs> if, it, if I envisioned it, I believe I can do it. So yeah. In my mind, I'm like, yeah, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. 
I've had a couple experiences that both went really well. Uh, I know where I'm weak and where I can develop, so mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm all in. Uh, but again, it's different for me, man. Like, I, this is all I do is perform. Mm -hmm. That's all I've been doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and now so, you're on the other end of it. Yeah, so now, now, I'm, now I'm able to kind of see all sides of it, but mm -hmm. it can get dark. Like, a lot of my comedy comes from dark places as well. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there's humor in everything? Oh, 100%. Totally. Mm -hmm. I, um, recovery humor <laughs> is, like, probably... Also, the Cammy and I talk about being a junkie and whatever, and make fun of myself Ooh. for it, right? And like, Damn, you know, oh, it's it's therapy. Honestly, the yeah. stage before this whole comedy thing even came into um, my head to even do, when I would go to comedy shows, I would always say the stage is their safe place to say whatever they want. Mm -hmm. If you were coming there to heckle. Mm -hmm. And you get ripped on, you deserve to be ripped Too on, bad. bro. So yeah. uh, recovery humor is very dark. And there's a lot of humor in recovery and, like, yeah. a lot of humor in making fun of yourself. And I actually have a friend who um, put on a show. He, I don't know where he is right now. I think he's t t doing sh shows in Europe right now. Oh, but wow. uh, oh, he put on a show in Vancouver called The Comedy Shocker, The Triple X Comedy Shocker. And oh. every comedian that came on was a very, very damaged person. <laughs> very damaged person. Oh. In the, like, I'm talking like abused sexually, Hard. were criminals, and da 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 da. And they all tell jokes about, you know, mm -hmm about those experiences and it's just like whoa Ooh. am I supposed to be laughing at this I don't know but it's hilarious like Joey Diaz yeah. yeah yeah and right. you know like it, it there is humor in everyday th mm -hmm. in everything mm -hmm. because it's all about the person telling the joke because that's their way that's it could be their therapy it could yeah. be just the way they laugh steam it could be the way they're creative but like mm -hmm. At the end, like that's their safe place. So whatever they're saying, mm -hmm. there's humor in where whatever they're saying, and it could be dark, could be light. Mm -hmm. I, f I feel like trauma creates unbelievable oh, people. Yeah. Yes, it really does. And, and, and really, I don't know what it is about uh -huh. trauma, but people, it almost seems like because of whatever the trauma caused, they didn't feel like they were getting the love or care or attention they deserve. And when they come out of it, it's almost like now everyone's gonna care about me. Everyone's gonna love me. Everyone's gonna see me. Mm -hmm. Everyone's gonna feel me, and that results in like some of the most talented people on the planet that come yeah. from the most mm -hmm. darkest places, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So but I think it's got to do with like them also previously being in the gutter and being in like you know the dark and the terrible places. It's just like nothing can be worse. Not, yeah, nothing can be worse than this. Like I, I honestly like I'm glad that I went through all that addiction and all that stuff because. It, I mean, again, I'm going to sound really arrogant and cocky when I say this, but I feel like I'm invincible. I feel like I'm way tougher and stronger than, you know, the average person because I've gone mm. through something that the average yeah. person doesn't have to even go through at all whatsoever. Like, the 12 I steps think. have taught me how to deal with life and stuff like that, so right? So, like, profound, man. yeah, man, like, I don't know. Sorry, I can't even remember how we got on this. No, no, yeah. you're, you're <laughs> talking about traumatized people. Yeah, traumatized yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I think it's just got to be like, it just comes from a place of like, I've been there, done that. Mm -hmm. I got the stories and the postcards and the scars. I can, like, nobody's more qualified to talk about these things like than armor. damaged people, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if you're just some guy with some book learnings, I don't want to hear from you, <laughs> man. <laughs> Well, I mean, absolutely amazing to have you here today. Right? Well, I, before we before we go, oh, we gotta go. It's been an hour, dude. It's I, fast. It's fast. But like, um, I do want to say one thing. Mm. Like, it is absolutely amazing to have him, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And I just think that you know what, you are such a beautiful soul, and I'm really proud of you for you know coming on air and sharing those stories because you know it's really gonna touch a lot of people's hearts, and and I really hope that parents are listening and kids are listening. You know, um, you without know, judgment. yeah, without judgment mm -hmm. because you know what, it's really especially the judgment mm -hmm. right it's it, i mean everybody does it Facts. you know mm -hmm. you know that's how we learn to grow that's how we become who we are mm -hmm. you know i mean hopefully it's not negative judgment you know but it's positive you know and just remember that there are people out there that can help and you had touched a, a few good things uh like you know understand it learn it you know talk to people that are going through it mm -hmm. you know and and just make sure that the individual going through it is capable mm -hmm. of 
of taking care of themselves, yeah. right? That's the biggest thing, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So those are some of the things that I am really proud that you're sharing with us, and you know, and you, and you're being vulnerable, and you know, you're putting out information there that, you know, I'm sure is. It, I know you're you're great because you're you're open, and I think that's so important for us mm-hmm. um, as individuals to understand that it's not easy to be that person, Facts. you know, and mm-hmm. um, and you know, and I hope people aren't judging, and I hope people really understand the message and and hear what you know. Uh, Ashneel has has said today, you know, I really am proud and really thankful for you to come on. Thank you. And share your story with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. But yeah, just just quickly back to to the comedy because uh, we we experienced this past weekend one of the most ridiculous incidents. (laughs) Oh my (laughs) goodness. In the history of mainstream television, the history of mainstream wherever we are right now, one of the most outrageous things I personally have ever seen in my life because that I mean, everybody is if posting. you're under a rock, Chris Rock himself, <laughs> one of the, to me personally, one of the greatest comic minds to exist on the planet, mm-hmm. top five that are alive, mm-hmm. one of the best joke writers, one of the best joke yeah. creators, one of the mm-hmm. best presenters of jokes, yeah. and one of the most savage of all comics. Oh, yeah. You know, if he's a host, and if you're in the front row, you you're are going to get ripped on. Hit, mm-hmm. And yeah. you're going to get hit hard. Yeah. Now, the opinions vary all over the place. Mm-hmm. Obviously, everybody loves Will Smith. I'm a huge Will Smith fan. Mm-hmm. One of the reasons I ever wanted to be an entertainer is because of the Fresh Prince, because he's so fly and out there. And mm-hmm. all the things that he does, to me, have been incredible. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just saw King Richard almost teared up multiple times in the mm-hmm. movies. Phenomenal talent. Mm-hmm. I was very disappointed in the way he reacted. Definitely. Yeah. Um, very I was disappointed. Quite surprised that he reacted. First of all, a slap. Yeah. Was the most degrading thing you could do to somebody. Yeah. It would have felt better to me if he punched him in the face, because at least yeah. it's kind of a man to man thing. Yeah. But the slap? And then for him to yell. Yeah. yeah. You know, the guy I that mean, doesn't swear, and you're like, keep my wife's name out your mouth into the yeah. nonsense. Yeah. And you know what? Not only once, but twice. And you know what? God loved. You know, Will Smith. he's got a yeah. problem with slapping people. This isn't the first time he's yeah. done it. This the is he tried to kiss him. Yeah, the guy who tried <laughs> to kiss him backhanded him. You know, like yeah. this isn't the first time he's done this. And the beef that I have right now, I don't know if we have time real quick, but yeah, yeah, I'm did. taking a course right now because of my um, court mandated course. Right, I have to yeah. take it. Mm-hmm. And at the start of this course, they showed us a video of Will Smith standing there talking about responsibility and fault. And yesterday we took this course wow. and we were joking with the facilitator about how they're going to have to take this video yeah, down. Exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to find this video and I'm going to take a video and I'm going to post it to my Instagram because I think it's hilarious. But yeah. I don't know. what, what he's, Will Smith's talking about how it's not your fault that this happened, but it's your responsibility to fa- so fix it. Yeah. I'm just curious as to what he's... I mean, what is uh, res- how he's going to handle this? Obviously yeah, I mean, down middle, you know, uh, underneath all of like, that. <laughs> we all go through a lot. Yeah, we do. Um, and I don't think we can make excuses for people. And again, Will Smith is a human. He's 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 not infallible. Mm-hmm. He's going to have temper tantrums and reactions. Mm-hmm. And there's some things you can't blame people for. Mm-hmm. But physical violence against a comic, to yeah. me, especially a guy like, yeah. first of all, especially Chris Rock, who is like, in the black community, a comedy god, yeah, mm-hmm. and legendary in his mm-hmm. m- content creation. And I've seen Will Smith at other award shows where Chris Rock was the host, belly laughing at Chris Rock, humiliating people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, you can't be okay when it's this shot to other people, and then when it's to you, all of a sudden you want to act bad because Will Smith's a big dude. Chris Rock's a skinny little guy. Like, yeah. you smacking a little dude makes you look like a bully. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. chump behavior. But I, I didn't bring it up so we could dive, deep dive into it. <laughs> because you are going to be putting yourself in these situations. Yeah, yeah. totally. You're going to be exposing parts of yourself that to other people are going to be offensive. Yeah. And to other people, they may have people that they lost to addiction. And they may have people that, um, you know, are still addicts. And you're going to be putting out content and material that may be offensive, may be hurtful, maybe. Putting people in a situation where like, oh, I don't want to hear about this. Mm-hmm. Have you already thought about these things going into it? Or are you just prepared to take whatever comes your way? The people who have anything to say about me, I could tell you that you don't want to do that. <laughs> you just don't. 
I will tear you apart on stage. Like, I will just find a way to make fun of you. Like, I, I just yeah. d- don't. Like, don't come. <laughs> it's yes. not for you. Yes. I don't go to a KKK <laughs> meeting going, hey, this isn't a safe place for me. Can you please make this more inclusive for me? Like, don't. Look, I'm going to tell you. Amazing. The best way to. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to tell you the story of an addict and an alcoholic. <clears throat> through the eyes of an <laughs> addict and an alcoholic, but through comedy. And, yeah. you know, like, the people who've been there and done that are going to laugh because they're going to know. Fa- and even right? if they don't, I, if they have an experience <laughs> stage, they'll laugh because they understand. Yeah, it. exactly. Like everybody knows yeah. an addict. <laughs> yeah. Someone that has gone through it and come out of it. Yeah, yeah but if you're going to feel, yeah. don't come. Just don't. This is not for you. And I've already got a spiel that I'm going to say before I perform. <laughs> Disclaimer. Yeah. This is not... <laughs> a safe place for you this is a safe place for me because the rest of the world as far as i'm concerned has you know made it very clear that it's not a safe place for you you know so i I mean you know growing up in ladner it wasn't exactly a safe place for me all the time so if all i'm asking for is five minutes on stage for it to be a safe place for me if you don't want to hear any of that stuff, don't come. Do if this. you do come and you do decide to say anything, please know that you will be an act in my next performance. <laughs> <laughs> so right? Fair. Like, I, I think it's so, so, Pepper, give you your flowers. I just want to say it for myself personally. Um, growing up as a same situation as you, you know, parents are from Fiji, ancestors are from India, born in Canada, um, being a person that. I personally am a self-starter, a self-learner. I want to learn everything that I possibly can about myself, my heritage, my history, and do whatever the whatever the work is. Mm-hmm. I put it on myself to do yeah. it. Um, I have listened to many episodes of No Ties, and you guys have provided me with information that I never knew before. Yeah. Um, and I think one of the most Absolutely. one of the most important ones to me personally is the idea that in our travels, the things that we were given for sustenance were essentially sugar water and buja. Mm-hmm. And that now leads to multitude of health problems yeah. Fijian people have in this westernized nation, being addicted to sugar, being addicted to fried foods, being addicted mm-hmm. to things that just feel good in the moment because mm-hmm. you don't know what you're getting next for food. Mm-hmm. And it's caused generations of family members that have diabetes and all mm-hmm. these different things. And yeah. I think what you guys are doing on your podcast is invaluable. Um, because you and your sister are such polar opposites when you communicate, mm-hmm. because she's very factual and you speak from emotion with facts, and I think it's something that people need to hear. So uh, I know a lot of our listener base is from India and Fiji, mm-hmm. and if you really want to get an understanding of what Fijian people are, mm-hmm. where we come from, why we are the way we are, why mm-hmm. we think, act, speak the way we do, you need to listen to No Ties 1879 mm-hmm. podcast. I think it's an invaluable resource of information. Yeah. Um, I think what you got, I mean, I'm sure you guys have felt the love from people yep. all yeah, across. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think Definitely. it's extremely important that this is something that we talk about and is heard because outside of you guys, there really isn't any other resource. No, there isn't. I mean, you guys are it. And not that guys are Which is surprising. Yeah. It's Two really kids it? from Ladner it's are the resource. Yeah. That just shows how what? underrepresented we are. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's true. And yeah. you know what the thing is? is mm-hmm. You're interested. You want to <laughs> yeah. know why. You want to know the whys, the buts. And you know what? And most of us just sit down and just... Oh, okay. Yeah. That's how it is. Yeah, that's oh, how it is. I there is know. no, yeah. Oh, do I really want to understand it? Um, I'll ask the question, but will they tell me? Probably yeah. Probably not, right? And so, you know what? I am really proud of both of you. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Like what Rory said, yep. that information is mind-blowing. Thank because you. you know what? Even I am learning stuff. Well, I shout out <laughs> to you as well for putting the attention on them when you had first heard about them oh. because I didn't know I didn't know anything about you guys I didn't meet you guys none of that stuff but Pepper's like hey you gotta check these guys out and I saw the image I'm like oh this is different two Fijian kids I didn't know anything about you guys and then when I started to go through you guys' Instagram I'm like oh this is very different because you're not mm-hmm. talking about things that everybody else talks about no um, so Pepper the plug comes through again <laughs> nice um, and I mean obviously we could Mm-hmm. go for much much longer than we are right now but yeah. we can't because yes. this is live programming yeah. um so before we do get out of here please let people know what avenues they can find you uh 
I can, or sorry, you can find me on Instagram at Ash Neil Prakash. Uh, I have a TikTok account at the same name, but there's nothing on it. Uh, also, just Ash Neil Prakash on Facebook. And then our podcast uh, Instagram account is at No Ties Podcast 1879. And same name on TikTok as well. It's great. Nice. It's great. And also, Ash. Um, or can I call you Rajan? Oh, I'm just course. <laughs> of course. Of course. I think your middle name is Rajan. It's not actually my middle name, bro. It is a name that my family calls me, yeah. but it's not written on my birth certificate oh. or anything. Yeah, yeah. I just have a first and last name, but the Rajan, that's like that's like my street name that Very my, you know, my, yeah, my, my family good. calls me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. You look like a Rajan to me, too. He really does. You're just being racist. No, I'm not. <laughs> Raj means Raj, right? He's a he's a king, and you are a king. So Thank you. You're welcome. I want to, if you can give any message, one message, to the listeners out there, that's going to deliver a punch. Well, what it? Please share. Oh, that's going to deliver a punch. Yeah, that's going to hit home. Hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't know if I really have, I don't know if I really have, like, a, a, a punch, but, um, I mean, if I would have to say anything, it would be that, to listen to your gut, mm. like, over the course of the last two and a half years throughout my sobriety, I've been listening to my gut a lot more about you know decisions and mm -hmm. just people and like you know those bad feelings if they don't drive well oh, don't do so it much you know like listen to that inner voice yeah. right like and also i don't mean to sound cheesy but like follow your dreams man yes. like you don't mm. have a lot of t you don't know how much time you have mm. and for a guy for like me who's about to turn 35 who spent a majority of his life mm -hmm you know drinking and drugging and not following his dreams like i don't know how many good years i have because i've spent so much time damaging myself mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's important for me to follow my dreams for the next now until f however much long i got mm -hmm. so whatever it is that your dreams are start a business you want to invent something you want to you want to free climb some crazy mountain or something like just do it like do it you literally have nothing to lose like this is your one life and it wasn't given to you just so you can wake up in the morning at 6 a.m. to go to work and hurt yourself or somebody else and pay their bills and etc like mm -hmm. yeah, just <laughs> be, yeah. be all that you can be like like seriously like yeah wake up in the morning and be ready to punch life in the teeth yeah. every day <laughs> just give her just bite down on your mouth guard keep your chin tucked <laughs> keep your hands up and just keep moving forward man well there you have it uh, thank you so much uh, Ashneel Prakash for mm. coming in from No Ties podcast mm -hmm. No Ties 1879. 1879. Ooh, yeah. 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 Thank you so much. You know what? It's absolutely amazing to have you on our show to share that story. And uh, and hopefully people are really listening. And once again, please do check out their podcast. Uh, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Lots of great information. A lot of young individuals, too, will benefit from it. From the, you know, when your parents are like, leave me alone. I don't know the answer. Mm -hmm. Go to their podcast. And, you know, and, <laughs> and do, if you're on Instagram, they should some great posts y'all had a yes. great yes. post today about yes. men I, and again i'd love absolutely. to get into it more but yeah. I know that, that post <laughs> was actually need. absolutely amazing yeah. too. Yeah, I do like it. Um, I, I love everything that you guys are doing. You guys are both absolutely amazing. Uh, much love to you guys both. Uh, please, please keep progressing. Be safe, and you know. And where where are people finding you again? Uh, no, where are people finding you? Well, I, I wanted to say shout out to Aisha for providing yes. this opportunity so we can really talk about things that aren't really mainstream radio yes. news topics yeah, that's right. so we kind of just dive deep and do whatever we want say whatever we yeah. want uh and i just just hands off like yo go do what you do yeah because uh, yeah and it's been great because we don't really pull plenty punches or hold back so mm -hmm. shout out to aisha radio bula musty dreams asian tv shana tv and pepper the plug pepper the plug you can reach me um uh 
on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I, I have a really hard time sharing any of my information. I don't know why. Uh, but uh, Pepper Prasad, simple social media, uh, TikTok. I'm on TikTok too. <laughs> there you go. Please follow me. I and only have 19 followers. Well, I'm a social media whore, so <laughs> yeah, you can you find me everywhere that yeah. social media exists. You can find me. It's A yeah. L I T E. It's Elite. Uh, High Faith Podcast Season 3. We just did our first episode of Season 3 last week. Cannot wait to share it with you guys because we can go unfiltered. Uh, I'm a potty mouth, so I go in. Um, <laughs> we talk about war. We talk about all kinds of nuts, <laughs> nutty stuff. Um, shout out to Mike Olton yeah. as well for being a great partner in this in this game of ours. Yeah, Mike is great. But um, last thing before we go, uh, chances are if you get to see Ash Prakash on stage doing stand-up, you will probably be seeing me doing stand-up as well because yeah. uh, I want to make sure we kind of do the, some of the same nights. Yeah. And if you choose... To behave like Will Smith. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll let you know, I've done some MMA training, and I got Ash's back. <laughs> so you can mess with Ash. Pepper Prasad is boxing now. So oh, yeah, she's, yeah. Yeah, she's boxing now. Back it's not a one-man team. No. <laughs> one of us, you mess with all of us. Yes. That's right. And I'm tire lifting, too. So you oh, yeah. nice. Some good videos. Yeah. Some good yeah, videos. That's right. <laughs> it's the Pepper and the Reef Show. Thank you guys for listening. Thank Peace. You. Later, guys.